here's a very strange zero view because I'm going to release video footage from my trip to Capital Audio Fest down in DC. And all that matters is the MoFi Source Point 10. That's it. Andrew Jones, that's that guy there. You may remember him from such hits as everything ELAC made recently and the old Pioneer BS 21s and 22s. Remember those? Yeah, that was all Andrew Jones. He goes from company to company, and then they like, designed by Andrew Jones. And apparently, MoFi, which is a uh, mobile f fidelity. Do they make speakers? I, didn't, I thought they did other things, but um, they gave him a blank check, and all they asked him to do was put, a set, put together a set of speakers that are big, because big is in. He said to us that big is in, and I, I guess that's true. Put together a set of speakers, anything you want to do, all we ask for is that it has really good, solid, punchy low end. And those are the things. So now, I was I flabbergasted by those speakers. Um, I'll tell you the story. Standing in the room, we're going through Capital Audio Fest, next room, next room, $15,000 speaker, $12,000 speaker, $30,000 speaker, $50,000 DAC. It just keeps getting more and more expensive. And then we go, everyone's, I knew the room number for that room more than I knew the room I was staying in. I was staying in 701, but that was 532. Have you been to room 532? Hey, 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 Mikan, have you been to 532? Have you, have you been to the new Andrew Jones and MoFi speakers? Shut the fuck up. We'll go. And we wait in line, because it's like, he takes like 12, 15 people into the room, closes the door, plays a demo of like three or four songs, talks to a bunch and then people leave and it was like being at Disney World you know when you go to like one of those new rides like the VR experience where the fucking dinosaur comes through and you know you're waiting there for two hours and you see the people come out and they're all like oh my god oh my god that was that room that was the fucking source point 10 room the Andrew Jones room the MoFi room and you know there's confirmation bias where like, oh, I know it's going to be good, therefore it sounds good, but I'm a cynical motherfucker. And we go into that room, and he plays the speakers. This, what you're listening to now, is a recording of a song through those speakers, through someone's YouTube, through this speaker setup, which we'll talk about because I set this up as it's, I'll explain in a second. But it's like, I'll skip out of the. So, the demo goes on. He plays some very light stuff, and this is like the second to last song. The last song he puts on. If I could skip forward ahead fast enough and hard enough. When you play those games, what do you do for the next better one? Yeah. Where he talks paper cones and silk things and the design and and then put on Dead Mouse already. Yeah. This man has ruined me because. Oh, he's using a different amplifier. Nice if there was just a mute button that you could. Wait a second. He's using a different amplifier. Is this the same room? What's happening here? He was using the, the one with the gear in it, the 200 Whopper channel one. He's using a tube amp there. Oh, he must be... I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I was... All right, anyway, go to Dead Mouse. I... Hope you've already digested your breakfast. Yeah, fun. This will help. Skipping ahead a little bit. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh... That woo was in the video. That was somebody in the room. So, like the most impressive speakers I've heard at an audio show like the last 10 years. Like I I love the Icon speakers. Oh, Zeos, Future Zeos, link to the Icon speakers. Not to ZMF Icon headphones. There's a whole company uh, called Icon and they have a speaker that's this tall and it's got a real weird shape and it's $25,000 but it's all self-powered and DSP corrected, it's fucking great. But they're $25,000. You go to this room, you go to the MoFi room, you listen to these speakers, and let me tell you how big those are, because that's a 10-inch coaxial. The reason that this is set up, now I'll go to this. Before I get to the most important part, 
there's a really important thing. And the reason I'm making this video here before I even get those speakers to review, because guess what? I'm getting those speakers for review. They're coaxial, 10 inch, ported in the back, two ports. And after the demo, he was talking about it and he was talking about the price with the stands and everything. And I misheard him because he was like, and the price is 3799. And I'm like, 37999 makes sense. This is really good. And then he was like, With the, without the stands, though, it's 36599. I'm like, wait, how many nines? I literally, I have a video on my phone of me going, wait, how much? 3799 I'm like, oh, each 7000 No, a pair. Now, to the mortal men in the audience... $4,000 for a pair of speakers is still too much. But as a man who does this shit for a living, where I look at that and know, I know that you, no wait, you, yeah, no, you're the, you know, you, you're $4,500 a pair. You're wireless, you're DSP, you, you're the Buchart uh, A500s. You're the Ace, you're 7,000. You're, you're like under 5,000. But like shit like this, clips, can I take this off without knocking one off? This is $3,700 a pair. And they're very good speakers. But I don't think anyone would bring them to a room at Capital Audio Fest and try to impress everybody with them. Clip has other things for that, the Scalas and things like that. Andrew fucking Jones designed a speaker that could do what those speakers did. And what those speakers did was destroy your insides from the outside. And with like perfect clarity and he did it and somehow they're gonna sell it for under four thousand dollars a pair a pair a pair but those are those are around that price those are around that price and these are over that price and those are around that price and you could take all of these well I'll, I'll, I'll save judgment till it's in the room but they could take most of these speakers and throw them out because that thing was stupid and <laughs> I've done my best with the, the stuff I have on hand to try to recreate. Like, he did the whole explanation of why coaxial is better. And I know coaxial is better. Coaxial is this. It means you have the tweeter in the middle of the mid-range or bass driver so that there's only one point of sound. When you have, like, uh, two of these, then you have a point here and a point here. And if you're standing up, then the, the waves don't line up and it's not as it's not as coherent. So it's better to have a coaxial. Problem is coaxials have problems. Even these fluid FX80s, which I fucking love, have problems because you have to have this surround move around a thing. Because that has this is fixed in place and that's moving. So you, there's like tolerances where air gaps can get through and you can hear like chuffing. And it's like, so they're hard to make. But when you get them right, they're fucking amazing. So as soon as I go back from Capital Audio Fest, well, I went to sleep. And then on the next day, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna pick up the fluid FX80s off the floor. And then I'm gonna need to add some bass because to, to make the equivalent of that 10 inch, we need this eight inch and that 12 inch. Those are the new or old Yamo, some model number 12 inch, super affordable subwoofer that I bought two of. That one's going back because the, the amplifier when it's weird, it gets all cr crunchy and shit. That one's perfect. That one has uh, no flaws. This one, if I turn it on, let's see if I, could, if I can make it fuck up. Shouldn't be that hard. But that one will eventually look. <laughs> like, everything I have happening here right now still pales in comparison to what those MoFi speakers put out. The source point tens. And as much as four thousand dollars seems like a lot, <clears throat> that was four thousand with the stands, it's it's thirty six ninety nine without the stands. Um that's the you you don't get it. Going from room to room, I hate audio shows. I go to them because it's fun. It's like going to the circus and you're the only person that's not a fucking fool and you point and laugh. Ha <laughs> $15,000 DAX. Ha ah, ha ha. Look at the cable risers. There was a fucking cable that had like a ghost shell. It was like floating things. It was like $80,000. It's like, ha 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 ha. 
And then you get to that room, and all of a sudden, it's not that funny because you, you, could, aff you could afford these speakers. $4,000 speaker is like, <clears throat> that's a lot. But everything else of the show was on un un unobtainium. The only other room that had actually almost an identically cost speaker that I actually liked was the Philharmonic BMR room, which had a tower like this big with an eight inch and like some wild setup with like two little flat plane things. And the dude was like, play 20 Hertz. And it played 20 Hertz solidly. And I'm like, that's a good speaker, $3,800 a pair. And I'm like, wow. So that room and the Mophies. And the Mophies, you couldn't, you, it, was the, it was the e rod Disney World. I wanted to ride it twice and I didn't get back to do it twice. So now I got to do it in my fucking living room. So I set this up to try to be like that. We got the coaxial on top, but there's, it's not big enough. Like literally the box, this box, like that's a 10 inch. Take that box there, <clears throat> keep the depth, keep the width, make it five inches taller because it's laying on its side. And that's how big those fucking speakers are. They have a WAF factor of fucking zero. You're ne anyone who's ever even spoken to a woman will never get those into their house. Unless your woman is like, I really want some giant fucking speakers. Then, you, then you're gonna get laid immediately and, and endlessly. Because those are giant, giant. I'm just looking around. Like the width of this and half the height of that tower, but it's a bookshelf. It's absurd. It's the silliest shit I've ever seen. And the, I literally, I thought it was gonna say $20,000 for a pair. And when it comes up to four, like the, the thing that gives PP hard now has always been for Zeo's price performance. I love a $4,000 headphone. It does a great job. Performs exactly like I expect, maybe even better than I expect. But we're working with such small margins of of the price to performance that it's like, yay! It's a four thousand dollar headphone that is good. Yay! Expanse is good. There it is. It, it just makes. <laughs> you think if I spent a hundred and thirty five dollars on a twelve inch sub, it would work perfectly? It's a Yamo, which means it's a Klipsch. And which means that they're going to guarantee it. So I've already had that one being exchanged. I got to pack that one up and Amazon sending me another one. That one's perfect. Where was I? Um, what women, anyone who talked to a woman will never get one. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. He was pushing them to the point of blowing our brains out with 200 watts. And 200 watts is like a lot, but it's not like a lot, a lot. It's just a lot. The only concern I had with the speaker, I'm literally giving them like a review without having reviewed them. Just having heard four songs someone else picked in a room I wasn't familiar with. The looks are fine. As a man, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. I just want the biggest fucking ugliest fucking screamy goddamn that. I want that. Um, the, it only has uh, two speaker terminals in the back, which means you can't buy amp, which I kind like I get it, like he spent 18 months developing the design and the crossover and how it works. But I would love to be able to take the tweeter and adjust how violent that is compared to the bass. Maybe I want to play quietly. All speakers have like, all things. A car is happy at a certain speed. My black Caprice, 82 miles an hour. It's quiet, it's smooth, everything's fine. You do 60 and it's like, uh, it doesn't know what gear it wants to be in. A Ferrari wants to be doing 100 miles an hour. No one wants to do 31 miles an hour in a Ferrari. It's not happy. It doesn't do its thing. Speakers, some of them can play very quietly, and that's where they're happiest, and you try to push them loud, and they, they don't like it. And some of them you only want to be played loud. Only want to be RB42s. Only want all the power all the time, and then they're perfect. And if you have to get those speakers, and you want to play them quietly, it may not be enough to activate the fucking murder. So maybe you got to tweak the treble versus the, the bass, and that would be nice if it had a fucking dual binding posts. Then I can have two sets of amplifiers. You can put like a fancy little, little tiny little tube amp on the tweeters, and then run some monster solid states for the 10 inch, and oh God. <sighs> yeah, no, 
I'm 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 befuddled, befuddled by that speaker, because it shouldn't. It's a very simple design. They even said it's a single 10-inch paper cone with a silk dome, and he just had to figure out the angles of the car, of the driver, and how to cross it over, and how to design the cabinet and the ports. And it doesn't seem like it's that hard, but yet this pair of speakers, which was cheaper than 90. 5% of all the speakers at the entire Capital Audio Fest destroyed everything at Capital Audio Fest. And I'm gonna tell a story about a patron of mine whose name will be anonymous right now, but he's one of those people who spends way too much on audio, like even though I've tell him, no, don't, and he's like, hey, dude, $10,000, yeah. Heard the price and said, damn, wish they were like $10,000 more because the exclusivity is not there. If, if the common man can save up for you know a year and buy his buy the best speakers that have ever existed, and we're getting to that point where I'm going to say it's like these speakers do things. It's not like I'm like okay, I've heard what was the best speaker I heard of the show? Oh, this one. I've done that before. Every show you go to, you listen to every speaker, and you're like, you know that one that was like the tube made of glass, and the, that was pretty good. Or or the icons, like I loved the icons. I went back four or five times, but the icons are twenty five thousand dollars. So it's like, of course they're they're good, but at least they're doing like the science end of it. Super respect. These blow your fucking brains out and you can afford them. How is that not the best speaker? By like by like an arcane League of Legends amount of fucking that much. And uh, so I'm working with Mimic Cables and I'm gonna try to work with, or Mimic Audio, and I'm gonna try to work directly with Mophie. I wanna get three of them because two is fantastic. But you know what makes a great center channel? A coaxial. Because then you can't be off axis from it. And oh my, the hand on heart to God and Chewbacca. If three of those speakers land in this house, the front end of my home theater is getting replaced. The heresies are getting replaced and the Swan M500s are getting replaced with those easily and that's all i'm gonna say about it so yeah no um thank you to uh audiophile junkie who i did not get permission but it's just like hey it's there i'm amazed he sat there and it's still on youtube i would always imagine that recording four or five song demos would just immediately get me pulled um also i want to point out i am no longer doing sound demos and putting them on youtube i am still doing sound demos unrestricted sound demos sometimes with titties in the wallpaper just because and they're being uploaded to, to a private telegram uh, concern so if you're a patron five dollars more or subscribe star five dollars more you get to see the sound demos now and hear them and find new music which is the, really the reason i did sound demos because people love new music anyway um i guess link to those in the description i'll link to these fluids i'll link to these subs and even linked to these stands, which are insanely... I think the stands cost more than the speakers. Because these are the Canto stands, like the high-end Canto stands. Actually, those stands cost more than the sub and the speaker. Those are like $250 a pair, and these are... No, these are $400 a pair. But those are $300 a pair. All right, the stands are still not the most expensive. <laughs> Nowhere close. Nowhere even close can I get anything in this house to sound like the fucking Mophies. Mofi, source points, sound squirts, I don't even know. All right, back to your authentic scheduled programming or some shit, I don't know.